And uh, today we will be talking with with Mary, a member of the TRIO organization within the Lacoudre Ojibwe University. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Mark. Thanks for having me. I'm happy oh. to be here. Oh, it's good to see you. It's been a while. I know. Um, and yeah, I think COVID was part of it because I was really not hanging around the college because it was pretty closed down for a while and then took a year for us to get get back to what was normal or the normal, new Mark. yeah the new normal <laughs> yeah so um so talk about trio what does what does trio stand for and what's its purpose on the campus sure thing so trio is actually at, um the word three so there was the department of education the federal government in the, oh, okay. decided that um low income first gen students needed like a leg up and so they developed three programs and that's upward bound talent search and student support services and they were created to work with students that are low income first generation and or uh has a disability that would hinder their success in higher education. Oh, so, a, okay. so it's actually a federally funded program that's able to offer extra supports. Students that to be that go to college and they have parents that went or grandparents that went, they they have that mindset already. So they're thinking higher education, they're thinking how to think college, think university. And so a lot of times students that come from you know first gen they're not thinking college so it's a shift in a mindset is a lot of what it is understanding the different grit you have to have to in order to be successful in college yeah or hopefully in life right yeah so it's a place that students can come to get that extra support what what types of things i mean we're talking about um just some cheerleading and being a sounding board for students or giving them some tips and tricks on student life and success. What are the things are, are you able to provide there for them? So the really important thing is personal support, especially at a, a smaller place and in the small communities that we are at um, Lucudere Ojibwe University is having a familiar face sometimes, having a friendly face, having somebody that's going to be there and be with you with your highs and your lows and a lot of times we want to like just really vent about the negative things or ah this is so tough i can't do it i'm gonna quit i'm right whatever oh and yeah you know so it's more about just being there with people through their processes and so the really important thing that we offer is that personal service that you have different goals in life than a different student. And so it's not just this like flat boring program where you must go check these boxes right. yeah. and then like, okay, good, you know, sign in, you got five minutes of my time and then move <laughs> on and that sort of thing. It's if someone needs an hour to really just sit there and, and sit there for a while and process through stuff and just right. really, cause we, we can hear concepts as we're learning, but then they really just have to sit and ruminate. And so yeah. it's, a matter of having a sounding board and and just you know like i said people like like we just feel so many things after the pandemic and we're still just coming out of it and higher right. education is a new thing and so just being able to to learn and learn how to manage ourselves and learn how to look at the world differently and that's a big thing of what we do so personal support is huge yeah <clears throat> yeah and, and so you know but then you're also there to learn and prove that you've learned something. So then the tutoring comes in. Um, we have staff that are really strong in the math and the sciences and staff okay. that are really yeah. strong in um, understanding and using computers. You know, some people are like, what's this mouse thing? How do I, I keep clicking? <laughs> like, ooh, stop clicking there, please. Yes. <laughs> You're making it worse. Don't do that. You told it to save. It will save. Just be patient. Right. And, and sort of like guiding through those sorts of things and how to write a paper, how to even think about writing a paper. Most, a lot, oftentimes people have a hard time just starting something. Yeah, just to get started, Literally, just to do that first, first sentence. That first sentence. And, and so it's, you know, again, it's the individual. Of how do you think? How do you write? How do you organize? How do you, how do you want this to be? And, and just being able to help them think through it themselves and, and figure out how to make it, you know, the product they want it to be. Yeah. Um, an additional important thing is money. Mm -hmm. You're giving up your time. Like the old adage is that higher education is a short-term sacrifice for a long-term gain. So 
being able to understand like <clears throat> most people understand the concept of money and what to do with it and we all just have a different view of what the purpose of money is so it's a matter of understanding how you look at your money and then what you do with it if you if you you know again you got to sacrifice sometimes like it'd be nice to have a new pair of jordans but yeah <laughs> you need gas in your tank right now right. so it's it's understanding budgeting and credit and we're uh lcou is a no-loan school so it's understanding if you have a bill how to write scholarships and what do you say that sort of thing so a lot of things they literally come back to understanding how you change your thought process sure um yeah. other, you know other things are uh just what it means to be successful you know what it means to be happy are you coming because you're coming to school because you're intrinsically motivated like internally like i want this i want right. this so bad or is someone making you come here you know your parent or your guardian your best friend is there so right. you know and sometimes you can just hook people in that way too but it's understanding what your internal motivations are and that sort of thing and just being able to like tease them out and and pull forward through them and see the see the end goal in you know understand we keep making new goals as we go along sure yeah um, and your space in the in the college itself the physical space mm -hmm. is really a relaxing area oh yeah there's yeah. coffee available there's yep. snacks available there's couches there mm -hmm. and you know com computer space across the hall there's still i think there's still a lab across the yes, hall there is, there is. and there's that support for the computer lab so students can you know put on some headphones and just start working on stuff and if they have a question they can go, go across the hall and ask for help on that exactly so i i know that um work and life and school are stressful so it's it's the impression you get when you walk in somewhere that immediately you're going to like feel that hype or you're going to feel that calmness or you're going to feel that chaos. And so we try to be that space and offer the friendly faces yeah. to be able to do that. Now, if you're going to sit there all day and watch Netflix, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> like, you know, that's cool. Like watch one episode of the UFO Cowboys, but then we got to do some work. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's also that space too, so that we create the safe space where that people with different backgrounds and different ideas and philosophies in life can come in and we create the place where you can talk and, and banter and mm -hmm. be able to gain a new understanding. You don't we don't have to all agree and, and decide that the world should be this way, but being able to entertain the idea of, of different concepts and a different way to look at something is in a safe place yeah so that people aren't coming to blows or anything like that so yeah right yeah and everyone loves coffee right yeah it's the fuel for the brain and the mind and <laughs> yeah. my uh, co-worker Edie definitely makes some of the best bakery and and i mean that's oh, a pride right there bakery he items yes, yes he doesn't want banana bread <laughs> in the morning yeah so it sounds like trio is really the the softer side of what a university experience is going to be because people look at their class schedules and then they get to the class and it's so formal and rigid and we got to get through these things but trio offers that soft-sided element a, to that that's a cool way to put that mark i didn't think of it that way but yeah i would say so just we still like, have to go through the university stuff and get through yeah, classes and yeah. think about all these structured things but it's a softer safer environment mm -hmm. and uh what what the staff provides there is that like you said that extra support that extra emotional social support type of yeah. things that make it a little softer right right um, Dang, thank you. I, I think I might like just borrow that <laughs> phrase from you. No, no, I'll so. rent it to you for uh, $20 a month. <laughs> if I cite you it's correctly. Copyright, yes, it's copyrighted. Uh, well, and so you've been with Trio for some time now, haven't you? I Yeah, I started in 2015. So, I mean, okay. I, I was thinking about it. I'm like, wow, this time just goes by because just all of a sudden you realize you're doing something you love. Yeah. You're doing something that you feel you're good at. Yeah. You know, I'm not great at it, but just, well, you know, so you, you and it, that's the examples too, is people that stay longevity and like, you can find a career that is something you love and something yeah. Yeah. you look forward to and something that 
we all need to find a purpose in this world, you know, yeah. whatever it may be. And so, so yeah, and it's just been a great experience. So, wow. Yeah. Um, so what did you go to college for? What was your um, intention? Because a lot of people I know, because I used to be an, an advisor mm -hmm. to university students, and obviously they come in as, um, you know, sophomore and freshmen, and they say, oh, yes, I'm going to do this. And then halfway through their junior year, they're thinking, I'm going to change my major. Or even in the senior year, they're yeah. going to change yeah. their major again. So uh, what was your personal experience in, in college or university life? Well, I also was a first John college student, but I didn't know it. Okay. So that's, this is, I was thinking about how really great this is in the long run because people hear trio and things like that. And like, yeah, first gen college student, but it doesn't always resonate that, hey, that's me, right? So yeah. after I um, graduated high school, I went to UW Stout for a semester just because I didn't want to be at home anymore. So I just had to get, <laughs> I grew up in a small farm town. So I'm like, I got to sure. get out of here. So I go to Stout. It's all like, I'm just lost, right? And I'm oh, yeah. first gen Huge campus, student. huge yeah. campus. Yeah. I have no clue what I'm doing. So then I'm like, oh. I don't like stout, so I'm going to go to River Falls and UW River Falls. I go there, and I don't like that either. So then I go back to stout, and I, I realize that looking back, I was lost the whole time, right? And I wow. never made a connection to anyone, right? At any of the schools that I went to. Okay. So then I just floated around for a while, quit work, quit school for about three years, did factory work, worked for the Conservation Corps, and I'm like, holy man, this is not me. I need to go back to school and. Yeah. And pursue a different avenue. So then I went back to Stout. Thank you, UW Stout, for helping me <laughs> like figure my life out. Right. Stayed at Stout for a little while. And then a friend was like, hey, you should come to Stevens Point. I'm like, oh, okay. I'll go, I'll go to Stevens Point. So I end up at UWSP. I was going to do natural resources. Like my little side thing is I like garbage and recycling and okay. things like that. But I realized I suck at science. I get, at, you know. <laughs> Water, soil, what? I don't even get this stuff. And right. I, I take a sociology class just out of my generals, and I'm like, man, this stuff is easy. This makes sense to me. It it just fits. So then I I uh, finish in a fairly decent fashion, and well, I was about 27, 28, and I graduated from UWSP with a um, bachelor's in sociology. So, okay. I mean, I get the I really get the whole, like, I don't really know what I'm doing. I, I'm doing something, and I was going to be an English major, you know, right. garbage, plastic, like, stuff that I thought I should do. But then I realized that, like, <clears throat> you kind of fall into what makes sense and fits for you. And you just, like, if you're open to seeing it, it it'll pop up for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, usually it's right there, um, and other people can see it in you. Right. And sometimes you you hear from them, and they say, "Well, Mary, you should really be, or you know, Mark, you should be doing this or that." And it's like, I don't know, I really don't see myself in that. <laughs> and for me, you know, I kind of fell into my career in media because it was a hobby, mm -hmm. and so I I really get paid to do a hobby now. And exactly. you know, if you love your job. You'll never work a day in your life. That is like so true. And it and it's just hard to really like there's a lot of times we get the words, we read the English, we understand the words as they're strung yeah. together, but then those concepts behind it just we have a harder time like feeling it. Yeah. And so that's what's great about what we offer is just helping people like really just feel it. Yeah. Really understand themselves or start to look inside. Yeah. yeah. So you know, during your time with Trio, how has the calling you've had on your life to help other students, um, how has this been for you? What kind of experiences have it been for you? Hmm. Well, I think, you know, like rocky at times and then just like, I don't know. I mean, it's just been rocky, but then it's also been like satisfying. Yeah. And it's also been um, challenging, but mm -hmm. a good challenge, a challenge, you know, personal challenges, professional challenges, things that <clears throat> it's interesting. Like I said, if you pay attention, you'll get the lessons. So sometimes I'll be, so I teach the college success course as an adjunct. So that's, okay. and then, uh, so that's, you know, talking about stuff like study skills and hard skills versus soft skills and employment, career exploration, 
Um, and then we get into things like metacognition, and that's like thinking about your thinking. And you're Medica like, what? Metacognition. <laughs> I learned a new word today. Take that home with you, Mark. <laughs> <clears throat> so essentially, you are able to critically think through the world these days. There's yeah. so much information coming out. Oh, us. yeah. There's so much information coming at us, yeah. like, you know, over and over. And where do we put our attention? And and what am I thinking about? And and there's aliens. And is there not aliens? There's always been aliens. Yeah. I don't know. And the stuff on the media and, and late breaking news when you pull up your being and all of that stuff. And it's, so yeah. it's like being able to focus your attention and think about what you're thinking about. So metacognition is thinking about your thinking. Hmm. Okay, think about that for a second, right? Yeah. And so, like, when I teach that um, that uh, subject, I'm like, okay, count how many times I said the word thinking. And so I think I average, like, 50, 60 times in an hour and a half. So it's where we think about our thinking. So then you're aware of your thoughts as they're flowing through, right. like, a conscious stream, and then you're able to, like, process sort of the world and information in a different way so that you can see how you're reacting to things or what you're taking in that's either positive or negative or is it is it harmful or is it helpful sure that sort of thing so essentially like i go along and these life lessons come at you right yeah. and so you're like it's easy to talk about stuff it's it's easy to teach stuff but the real heart of it is to be able to feel it too so you know like having a passion yeah. and i think that's what it is it just really fills that passion yeah yeah and that's uh true for your students that come into trio and are looking for guidance and help again to really help slow down their day so they can think right. about what's really going on uh because you're right there are so many choices in life out there and going through university classes whether it's a one credit class, uh, a 100 class, or a 300 class, mm -hmm. um, or you're running a full schedule or just a partial schedule, there's other things in life that are just going crazy. Right. And uh, Trio offers, like I said, that, that, that safe place to go, to unwind, to maybe bitch a little bit yep, about life, yep. and, you know, <laughs> or a, a lot of bit maybe <laughs> for some. And it's nice to have that listening ear to say i'm with you i understand i've been there for sure you know for sure. and uh help relieve some of that stress and anxiety i really think that's what trio offers i, I maybe i should come work for trio i don't know well you have a bachelor's <laughs> degree at Eagle Bar, so that's really then that's you know that's a great thing and it's so we are limited by department of ed funding so that means that we can only provide our services to students that meet one of at least the following requirements. Which, okay. Okay. So if you already have an associate or a bachelor's, we can't take you into the program. Okay. Because part of the theory, right, is to get people that don't have the associate or the bachelor's prepared to be able to enter those. To get to next, that. Yep. Yeah. So then that's, so you already have a bachelor's. So I'm sorry, Mark, you can come visit and have some coffee and stuff, but right you know the services are, are again if they've on. already yep. achieved that degree Correct. they're they're being successful in their college experience Not so would, right? yeah yep. yeah so yeah you're right that's catching those students before they get to that degree or help them along to get to that degree exactly is what the program's about and exactly. then what other requirements are there uh so not working toward your first associate okay um low income as defined by the federal government okay and then, or a first gen college student. So neither parent got their bachelor's degree, parent or guardian, excuse me, by the time you turn 18 as a student. Okay. And, um, or, and, or a student with a documented disability that would potentially hinder their success as a college student. Sure. Yeah. That's, um, that's a lot or not so much a lot. I don't know. It's, it's, it seems like it is a great help for um, those type of students who, again, are going to be struggling. If they didn't have this support and they're in the first day or the first month of their first one credit class, um, I can imagine for that first person, you know, the first, uh, what'd you call it? The first uh, student? Uh, first generation. First college generation student. college yep. student to be overwhelmed with just 
all these different people in the class, the professor being a professor mm -hmm. and the, you know, what's, um, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Um, what does FAFSA mean? Oh, yeah. All these acronyms that yes. they throw at you. And it's like, okay, and now we're going to go look at our syllabi. And it's like, <laughs> syllabi. And what is a syllabi? And it's like, Okay, here's your textbook, and you have to go buy your textbook. Wait a minute, yes. I have to buy. You don't provide in high school. They provided the textbooks right. to me. I don't. I, yep. Yeah. And it's, two, if like if you come to class, you come to class. If you don't, you don't. More than likely, the instructors aren't going to be calling you, and you're not going to have to go to like truancy court. Yeah. Like, you know, it's just you show up or you don't. So it's like figuring out how to take your life in your own hands and being personally responsible and. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's polite. I have to go to the bathroom, but yeah, you don't need my permission any, you know, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> please go. <laughs> if you need to, please you go. Know. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's also that, like I said, that trans transitioning that mindset into this is my life and I'm taking control of it and I make the choices. And, you know, there's oftentimes where school isn't right for a person. Say you go and you're you decide, yeah, this is it for me. It's we're there to also help, like, just call and say, hey, it's not working out. I can't do this right now. Like, it's too crazy. I can't manage right. it. I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll help you through the processes of being able to, you know, withdraw and communicate to the proper channels what needs to happen next. So, yeah. Well, that's a lot of uh, a great things that TRIO is offering there at the university and um, how can people find you or get in touch with you once they get on, they, I'm sure they can get on campus and they take a left-hand turn Correct. and go down to the end of the, the never ending hallway. <laughs> Toward the science lab. Yes. Oh, uh, and, uh, and your office down there. Yep. All the way down. What, if it, if you remember back in the day, it's where the library was. It's part of like the original part of the, Oh, uh, campus okay. back in the day. Um, but yeah, so essentially you can come in and say, where's Trio? Yeah. Um, I know. So some people want that personal attention and then some people want like just, I want a Zoom or I want a phone call or I want an email. And so on our website, we have um, links to the Trio email. Okay. Trio at lco.edu. Um, the same pattern for our emails as our first initial and our last name. Um, you can call and ask for someone in TRIO as well. Yeah. Um, so then that does, you know, springboard a little bit. So we have people that are coming in from other areas, right? So maybe someone from Mississippi wants to come here and go to school. So we have that Zoom option, right? So yeah. then we're able to provide that support over the internet. Oh, okay. You know, so have a Zoom meeting and then see face to face. And I don't know if you Zoom much, but you can like share your screen and yeah. I can share mine and we can work back and forth and things like that. So the really great thing is figuring out how to move forward in the world and not get stuck in old technologies or, or, you know, like this has worked in the past. Well, most things pre pandemic. Yeah. You know, we have right. to, we have to think differently. And so yeah. part of it too is for, we ask the students to like, you know, think and learn and critically think is, is we have to lead by example and we have to do the same things, think and learn and, and come up with new creative ways. So sometimes it is a matter of just being able to, you know, call or email and then we're able to like zoom if we can. And sure. Things like that. So. Yeah. And I, did, I didn't think about this uh, to the remote locations for the university. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. To have those services available to them and, is there any in-person uh, available at the Bad River, Lac de Flambeau, or Red Cliff locations? Yeah. yeah. So we have success coaches, which is um, trio staff. We call we call ourselves success coaches. Okay. We have a success coach at each site as okay. well. So there's someone in Flambeau, and there's an outreach center, I guess we can call them. And so staff are there. So there's someone in Flambeau. There's someone in Bad River. Okay. There's someone in Red Cliff. So. Yeah. Oh, that's very helpful. Oh, I, never, yeah. I never thought about those. I always think of just what's happening down here at the end of the street. So yeah, yeah. So very it's, cool. In you know, if each community has a different sort of life to them, right? So then yeah. you have someone that's from the community. From that community. There, wow. And that makes a big difference. Yeah. Too. Very cool. 
Well, Mary, this has been very educational for me. I, awesome. I, I just thought it was a place to go get coffee and hang out and get treats. But <laughs> so do some other my, people. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, that's really cool to see those services that are provided again through the Lakota Ojibwe University uh, here at LCO. So thank you for your time today and coming in and sharing your experiences. Anything else you have to say? Uh, well, I want to give a shout out to the class of 2020 still, and I think I'm always going to do that because I kind of got ripped off of a graduation during the pandemic. Oh, so yeah. Other than that, I, I want to extend a thank you to you for inviting us and, a, and having a great conversation. And, yeah. You know, the important thing is always learning from whatever interaction it is. Like, maybe this is my first time on the radio, unless I did a call in and want something or something. But, you know, I mean, and it's those little things, just having a right. new experience, no matter what it is. And yeah. So, yeah. So thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Very cool, Mary. Take care. All right, Mark. Have a good day. See ya. All right. So if you're ever interested in learning about what uh, Lakota Rio, I'm sorry, the yeah, Lakota Rio Ojibwe University has, you just go to lco.edu and uh, find their link there and get involved. At least try a one credit class. That would be just to get introduced. Yay! Did good.